Hello, I'm Anne Kerr. Welcome to my art studio. This week we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to look at how we can get the last of the paint out of our fairly empty watercolour tubes and therefore saving us some money. And we'll also look at the difference between buying pans and tubes and whether, is, and whether one is cheaper than the other or whether they work out to be just about the same. So, are you ready? Now in this video, we're going to have a look at how we can save some money by getting the last of the paint out of the tubes and also whether it's more economical to buy paint in tubes or pans or whether there's no difference at all. So let's have a look. Now there are many, many gadgets on the market which will help you to get paint out of tubes. You, you can buy little keys that you plastic keys that you slot on the end and you twist them and that squashes the tube and pushes the paint up to the top so you can get the last of it out. And there's ones where you turn a handle, there's all sorts of things on the market. But the one I find works for me is this little gadget. I don't know what it's called. Uh, there's no manufacturer's name on it. I will try and find a link to it and, and um, put it in the description below this video if I can. I'll have to search the internet because there just isn't a name on it, which to me sounds a little bit like bad marketing. Anyway, what it is is a plastic palette with ridges on it and a little roller that's got ridges on it and two little slots. So what you do is you take your tube of paint and you put the end of the paint in the little slot and then you roll this up and you push hard and it is quite hard until it won't go any further you roll it back and look that is completely flat and then you can gradually do that until you you get right up to the end of the paint and then you have to do something different which I will do in a moment you can do it with big tubes here's, here's a big tube of paint Let's put that in the slot and let's start rolling. Really got to push hard. There we go. And then roll that back. Look at that. Really has squashed out every last little bit. That's an acrylic tube and it's squashed out every last little bit. And if I wanted to, I could fold this up. I tend to leave them as they are. Then I can still tuck them in, ready for the next roll when I get further up the tube. And if you've got some very little tubes, like these, you can put those up in the top slot and then roll this up and squeeze it out in the top slot. And if you end up with a tube like this after you've rolled it, but you've still got some paint, you've still got some paint up here, I'll show you how to get the worst, you know, the last little bit out from, out from here. So what we're going to need is a cutting mat, so I protect my table. I'm going to need a craft knife, or you could use a scalpel. Or an exacto knife, whatever you've got that's pretty sharp, a pair of pliers and a wooden stick. So let's have a look and see what we can do with this tube. Now do be careful not to cut your fingers. Now the first thing to do is to cut off the bottom bit. There's that bit. And the next thing to do is to cut off the top bit. Mm. 
There we are. Looks as though I've committed a murder, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm wiping off the blade. Look, this would go into a good horror film, wouldn't it? As she wipes the blood off the blade. And then you want to cut this one all the way down the middle. It won't matter if you go through both pieces of metal through to the mat. It won't matter at all. And then you open it up. And look. Look at all that paint in there. And then with a palette knife, or you could use the blade that you've been using to cut, you can then scrape that off and put it directly into your paint box. Such a wonderful, messy job, this. Love it. I won't do it all, but you can see what I mean. Okay, so that's that bit. So yes, it is a messy job and you can use gloves if you want to, honey. I don't possess any gloves, actually. So then you want to open up what's left in here. And then you can take a stick and you can lift out Look at this. Any of the paint that's left in the top of the tube. And then you take your long nose pliers and you can squeeze anything else that's left behind and then put it directly into your palette. And go all the way around, squeezing with your pliers. So yes, it is rather messy and I've just washed my hands off. Um, you can use gloves if you want to, no problem at all. I just don't possess any gloves, I'm afraid. Um, you, you can see that I've got a whole pan of paint here that I've filled up just by rescuing that rather empty looking tube. So give that a go and you'll be saving yourself quite a bit of money. Sometimes when you open up an old tube of paint, you find the paint inside it is crumbly and dry. And you think, well, what can I do with that? Well, what you can do is you can scrape the crumbly dry paint off into a little container, something like this, or one of these little, little jam jars that you, um, that you can get in restaurants. I keep all of these. They're wonderful for storing things. Scrape the dry powdered paint off into one of these little pots and then with a pipette add one drop of water at a time and use anything you like just to stir it up. I haven't got any crumbly paint to show you but this is what you do. You stir it up and then if, it's, if you still think you need another drop then another drop of water and then stir it around and that, let it settle like that and keep going back and giving it a stir and eventually you will end up with your watercolour in a sort of a paste. Now you can either then take that out and put it into your palette or you can let it dry and then take it out as a dry lump and put that in your palette. So whatever state your, your um, old watercolour is inside the tubes, whether it's liquid like that or whether it's dry and powdery, 
you can rescue it. Sometimes we have to decide whether we're going to buy pans or tubes. And we've already looked at the practical situations where maybe you're using a big brush like this. Well, there's no way you can dip that brush into a pan. That would be ridiculous. So that's where having a tube and squeezing some onto your palette and then using your big brush would make good sense. But I'm not looking at the practicalities of using these at the moment. I'm, use, I'm looking at the economic value. So, which is the more economic, pans or tubes? Okay, let's have a look. Now, most watercolour pans are, contain approximately two millimetres of paint, millilitres of paint. And this tube is 14 mil. Okay, now I've looked up the prices. This half pan, I'm going to have to do it in, in pounds. Sorry, people in America, I find it hard to think in dollars. You'll have to convert it for yourselves, I'm afraid. <laughs> so this little pan, two mil pan, of this particular colour will cost six pounds sixty and the fourteen mil tube costs thirteen sixty five now that's two mils and that's fourteen mils so that so that's seven times more in there than there is in there okay so if we look at what seven of these cost so seven times 660 is 46 pounds 20. So if I bought seven of those, which is the same as what's in this one tube, it's going to cost me 46 pounds 20. But this tube only costs me 13 pounds 65. So now, can you see that buying your paint in tubes and filling up your pans is much, much cheaper than buying individual pans? Incredibly cheaper. Seven pans would cost me £46.20. One tube containing the same amount of paint, £13.65. I think that's what they call a no-brainer. <laughs> now in my own paint box, what I do all the time is I buy tubes and I fill up my little pans here with my tubes because it is by far the most economical way to buy paint. So you can see that by doing just a little bit of extra work, we can actually get quite a bit of paint out of tubes that look fairly empty. We can put the paint directly back into our palettes, or if the paint is very dry, we can re-wet it and then store it again into our palettes. And all those things will save us some money. And then we worked out whether it is cheaper to buy paint in pans or in tubes. And I think you can see that by buying paint in tubes and filling up your little pans or filling up your paint boxes is by far the cheapest way to buy paint. So I hope that's given you some ideas on how to save a bit of money. If this video has been useful for you, then consider clicking that subscribe button and the little bell icon because that lets you know when I upload yet another video for you. If you've enjoyed this one, then give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Remember, there is an artist in everyone. Goodbye for now.